what has 185 brake horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque? Do you know? Do you? Well, I tell you what, I'm flipping telling you, it ain't red. it a Ford Focus ST. I'm telling you when I come here every day and I'm fixing red Mondeos to have something like this is something wow <laughs> I'm actually happy to come to work today just to change the oil on this car so anyway let's get it on the goddamn ramp and drop the flipping oil out <laughs> Anyway, first up, there we go. Whoa, I'm liking this. You know, this top cover is probably the best part of 150 pound all by itself. Two litre diesel. The funny thing is, this is the same engine that goes in all our taxis, except for the fact that the ECU has been mapped to make it quicker. But anyway, for today, I'm going to change the fuel filter, which should be a walk in the park, and an oil and filter change. And yet, I know I change the oil and filter on these engines all the time. But this is a fancy ST. Anyway, let's get the heck on with it. The armor plating over the top of the filter is held on by three eight mil screws, which I'm gonna remove. There, put a bit of rag there, stop the spillage. Get this pipe off. We'll pop that up. Now I need to press this down like that. You can do it with your thumbs. And then this pipe should, yep, that's it. That will pull out like that. And I'll just leave that there for the minute. There's not much actually spilling out, which is good. It's the same thing with this back pipe. The only thing I'm going to point out here, where this pipe comes round, there's another pipe behind it. When you pull this pipe off, you've got to watch it, that it doesn't, it kind of gets caught on a bracket. So you've got to be careful pulling it off. They can be a bit tricky. I'm going to see how it goes. If they don't come off straight away, like if they're pretty tight, you can sort of like flick them with a screwdriver a little bit like that and they'll just pop off. There, we're off. That was okay. Wiring connector, you just push the tab back like that, then flick the lug up, and that will pop off. Lovely. 24 mil socket size on our filter housing. Obviously, don't go mad undoing it, just, just undo it nice and slowly, because it is quite a tight thread with a seal on there as well. And watch your pipes, you don't catch them when you're undoing it. There, and I can un now it's gone all nice and easy, I can unscrew that the rest of my hand. And that should lift straight out. I'm going to flick this filter out with a screwdriver, that's actually come out. Yeah, and I'm going to just let the, 
let all the fuel flow out first back into the filter housing. There is a screw at the back of these filter bowls that you can undo and it will drain the fuel out of this bowl through a clear pipe underneath the vehicle. Or you can use a, a pump to suck the fuel out of this bowl if you wanted to. Personally, I never bother. We've never had a problem. Oh, but you must check inside here for like contamination, uh, metal specks or anything like that. Because if you get a lot of metal in here, little specks of metal, it's a sign that your high pressure fuel pump is breaking up. So you want to inspect the fuel anyway. And at the very least, uh, give it a good sort of light white round, all the surfaces in here, make sure everything's clean. And then we'll put our new filter in. That filter's actually not too bad. Like I say, I've seen them completely black, where they actually are restricting the fuel from going through. That one's still gone in a bit longer, I'm sure. But yeah, we're changing it anyway. Right, let's just get this seal off. You could probably use this seal again, but you get a new seal with a, with a, with a new filter anyway, so you may as well change it. There, one filter. Genuine Ford filter. Woohoo! And that will actually push straight into the filter bowl. You've got to push that in. There's another little like popper bit there. So I'll lay that in there and I'll just push it down like that. You'll feel it like click into place. Now I'll put our filter cover back on and you can screw it in by hand. Once again, as you're tightening this up, watch, watch none of these pipes on this filter housing catch these other pipes. You just got to might sometimes hold them out of the way of your finger while you're tightening this up. And you, you'll feel it, it'll come to a stop and that'll be it. Done. Very important here, on the back of the filter bowl you've got this pipe sticking out. Now this back pipe is it's a bit tight getting it onto here. Okay. There's like a there's like a bracket here where this other pipe sits and the pipe gets in the way. So first of all be very careful putting it on. Once you get it on the pipe and you have to push it this way onwards, if it feels like it's not going to go on, go away, have a cup of tea, think about it, then come back. Don't try and force it because you can break them and believe me, these do break these pipes and then you'll be sorry because they're over a hundred pound for a new one. So just be very very careful. You've got to get them just right. Sometimes you've got to try and twist the pipe a little bit, otherwise it won't push on, it'll just be solid. But then that's, that's clicked on. So all I'm saying is, take a bit of time and thought, and if it feels like it's not gonna push on, don't force it. This other pipe, no problem at all, because you've got loads of room, it can just swing around in the wind. So just pop that in, click it in, make sure the little white tab is pushed down. Done. Then just remove all your old rag, give it a wipe, get rid of any fuel that's around the edges so it's all nice and clean. And then pop your connector back on. Bump. Stick your shield back in place. Three eight mil screws. Yeah, they'll, they'll go in finger tight. And then you can just nip them down. Done. Before I drain the oil, I always lift the dipstick out and I remove the oil filler cap and obviously give it a wipe. As, as Monica says, that is to let gravity into the engine. Right, let's take this puppy up in the air. If you didn't notice, to get this on this ramp, I had to put the front wheels on these blocks to raise, it, raise the front wheels up a little bit. Then I can wind these pads up onto the seal. And on these actual uh, seals, they've got little arrows here to show you where you're supposed to put the jacking point for your, for your ramp or your jack. Because if you don't do that, you can actually crush this, this plastic cylinder. Then you'll be in trouble. <laughs> the good old under tray. It looks like we've got eight of these Torx 30 headed screws we've got to remove. Oh, in fact, I never realized that. There's three, four screws holding this trim on and this actually, it just pops out. <laughs> and then, then you've got another one 
another three screws holding this, this tray on. There, that's it. Then that will that will slide forward. Woohoo! Okay, it's a metal canister oil filter. I'm going to use my grips, see if I can undo it. Yep, that's tight. Yeah! Flipping heck. But it's gone. We're loose. Okay, let's get the drain boil. Okay, the best thing with these filters is to undo them slowly, then just let them drain. There. And if you've got a big lump of rag, you can undo that and catch the filter rather than letting the oil get all over your hands. There, we're off. Okay, one oil filter. I'm going to put a ring of uh, fresh oil on this on this seal, just so it screws on easier. I don't know why. There's always been a debate of should you put oil on this rubber ring before you fit it, or shouldn't you? I always do. So there you go. <laughs> now, obviously, you want to get a piece of rag in there and give that a good clean up of all the old oil, because you don't want nothing dripping. And we want it all nice and clean for our new filter. Then we can offer our filter up and screw it on. I'm going to say something here, which I've, I don't think I've ever mentioned before, but it's worth mentioning. These filters, these metal canister filters and these particular engines, what I do is I tighten them up as tight as I can get them with my hands to start with. And then I'm going to put a strap on it which is something I'd not normally do. I'll explain in a minute. And I'm now going to tighten this filter up. Considerably tighter than I would, generally speaking, tighten any, any filter on any other car. But that is, uh, that's pretty damn tight now. The reason is, when we first got our taxi fleet, some of the oil filters started coming loose. This wasn't from new by the way, because the, the new oil filters come on really tight. After we'd replaced the oil filters, we're tightening them up as we would normally tighten an oil filter. They were coming loose and we were getting oil leaks. Luckily, we've never had a disaster, but we've had six or seven oil filters come loose and we've come to the realization that they need to be tightened up tighter. And some of these filters, we've actually tightened them up a bit tighter than what we thought we should have to do and they've still come loose. So I think it's just a trait with this particular engine. And I'm not the only one that knows this. That's why we make a point of making sure these filters are definitely tightened up properly. Anyway, let's get on. Let's pull the firing pin out of the sump bung. Yeah. Right, I do suggest being very careful taking this sump bung out because the oil tends to just gush out. So I'm gonna get a bit of rag to shield me just in case. There. <laughs> right, if you want, you can change the O-ring on the sump bung. Uh, I don't generally do this. I use these O-rings again and again and again. But, because this is a special car, we're going to change it. So that's off. Yeah, come out. And we'll pop this on. There. And I'll just give that a... My, my fingers are covered in oil anyway, so <laughs> that's lubricated it, so that's ready to go back on now. When the oil drips get down to like a really slow drip, I'll kind of get a bit of rag in there, give it a good wipe around, then quickly pop the sump bung back in, and it's 90 degrees turn clockwise. Then obviously, just give it a thorough wipe around. When it's all clean, Pop your clip back in. That sun bung's not going to come out. Oh, the fun part. Putting the under tray back on. Right then. Because this is a, like a 
oil and filter service, we go over the entire car anyway. Make sure everything else is good, like wheel bearings, brakes, you name it. Top the washer bottle up for the women out there who never bother. Anyway, once I've, once I've gone around checking everything, I'll then put some 030 oil in the engine and we'll start it up. Flipping neck, 19 inch wheel rims with Michelin Pilot Sport Freeze on. Mmm. <laughs> we keep the 030 oil in stock here. We buy it in like 200 litre barrels because we do a lot of oil changes. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have a pair of hot pants and Monica's not here to put the oil in this engine. So we'll just have to fill it up and forget that idea. Boom. Right, before I start this, I'm going to have to get it off the ramp because I can't open the door because the ramp post is in the way. So, heave ho! <sighs> Tea break. Cheers. Right, I'm going to start this car up. This is a key fob car. Because this car is specced out, believe me, it's got all the toys. We haven't got a key car. <laughs> we, just, we just leave this in the car, press a button on the dash, and it will start up. Let's go. There is a button just to the left of the steering wheel. By the way, I'll tell you what I do like. This little kick plate down here on the sill lights up in red neon. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's start this puppy. Foot on the clutch. Woohoo! We'll give that a good wipe. Dip it again. Where are we? Look at that, absolutely bang on the money. 6.5 litres, 0.30. There's one other thing I'm gonna show here. There's a bit that's broken on this car and I'm gonna replace it. And I never knew these things existed until today. This is like a little door protector, when you open your door, it kind of pops out. I'll show you how it works in a minute. And apparently, yeah, they get bust really quickly, really easily. You've only got to catch them with your, with your trouser leg or something, and they'll snap off, but they just hook on. So we're going to pop this on. So you've got this little strip here, and when you open the door, this pops out, and it goes along your door edge to stop the door hitting other doors. And this little little clip bit here, it just pushes in like down like that. So let's pop it on. So you just slide this down onto the pin and the outer edge will sit on the outside of the door. So let's give it a go. Yep, that's just clipped into place. See what I mean? There's our strip. Yeah, you see that? You see it pop in? Ta-da! It's like magic. And I'll shut the door and hope it doesn't get broken. Well, that was an easy fix for once. What say you? We just go for a quick ride up to the roundabout and back. Because I've never been in one of these focuses for a drive. So uh, it'll be interesting. The only thing is, I'm feeling lazy because I had to change the oil. Let's get, let's get Monica to drive it. Wherever she is. Hopefully in the office. Well, Marie. Hello. You're back off holiday. Yeah. Working hard again, I see. Yeah. Spreadsheets, Microsoft Office. Mrs. Monica. You know that, that yellow car we've got in the garage? Yeah. That sporty little version. Mm -hmm. You fancy taking it for a rip up the road? Hell yes. <laughs> Let's go!
go! Go, 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 go! I'm following you! I hope you're alright in them uh, platform shoes. Of course. Practiced all day for it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, they're leather seats by the way. Leather. Not nice. PVC. Right, we're in. Let's shut the door. Anyway, listen, before we get going, no heroics. Hmm, I'll think about <laughs> it. <laughs> right, this car, you've got a key fob here, mm. so that just stays in the car like there. All yeah. you've got to do is put your foot on the clutch and press that button. There you go. Engine service oh, now. I've got, I've, got to re, I've got to reset the service light, that's all that is. All you do is press OK on the steering wheel, there. That's it. Mm. Right. Take it away. Right, I better, ex I better actually adjust the exposure. Again. Yeah, I know. Where are we going? Uh, to the roundabout up past the car sales, and then I reckon that'll do. Okay. It's a careful piece of driving. Always. I bet you liked this, didn't you? Yeah. What's the seat feel like? I bet it hugs you in. It does. I can't. <laughs> I feel like I'm completely done though. I, I bet you could do a lot of miles in this car. I know. <laughs> Can I, I keep it? I, I don't think he would actually let you have it, you know. <laughs> Why not? I'll tell you something, he's got black, black headlining. Mm. That's always nice in a sporty version. Well, it's ST, isn't it? This, this is the same engine what's in the um, all the taxis, except that it's been mapped to make it go quicker. Yeah. So I, I don't actually think we're going to put our foot down because uh, we don't want to be involved in an accident and I don't trust women drivers. Oh! <gasps> I know. No, you I, I just asked for it. <laughs> no, I actually do oh. trust you, driver. Look at that. Look at look, that these taxis. Bloody oh, red taxi <laughs> just pulled out in front of us. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. You've got your foot down in you. <laughs> I'm getting a bit concerned. It's really nice, you know. It is nice. So, right. shall we map our taxis then? No. Could, could you imagine all our taxis being bring back because so they go quicker? This has got 185 brake horsepower. That would be too much for half them taxi drivers. They wouldn't know what they're doing. They, they can't even stop as it is. Yeah, true. The amount, the amount of front enders we get. Oh, I'll tell you what, let me spin this round. Look at them back seats. This is like the seats in this car are a work of art by themselves. Go on, I'll tell you what, we just went round that roundabout pretty quick. You're getting into this, aren't you? I am. <laughs> You'll be wanting one. I always want one. It's a nice car. It, it smells nice. Yeah. Look at up here, you've got, you've got your oil gauge, you've got your turbo, turbo boost gauge. Got all the toys. This car is actually kitted out. It's, it's like the top spec one you could get. So if it's supposed to have it, it's got it. Yep. I'm impressed. About? I'm impressed about this car. I actually like oh, the okay. colour as well. I thought you were going to say about my driving, but anyway. Oh, no, you <laughs> <laughs> Your driving is actually very good. I can see you're gradually getting your foot down a little bit further on the gas. Right. I can just imagine that after you've been driving this for about 20 minutes, you'll be doing donuts. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, what a car. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what they cost. Shall we get one? No, we peasant like me, and well, I don't know if you can afford it. Maybe mm -hmm. you can, but I can't. Probably not. I'd rather travel. <laughs> I'd have to fix a lot of taxis to afford one of these. <laughs> we need to make more videos then. Oh, like, oh you've got your sparkly uh, black trousers on. Yeah. So. In your nice jacket. It's all on the lake. Where would you like me to put the car? Oh, just, just about here. Just right in front of us. That'll do. Just there. 
Monica, that was fantastic. It I, was. I, I enjoyed that ride. Me too. What I reckon we should do mm -hmm. is just a few shots across the yard. Yep. With some slow motion. Seems yeah. I brought this camera out specifically for this car. I think so, we should. Let's go. Let's go for it. Right, Monica's going to drive across the yard and we're going to get some slow mo. I don't know why, it just seems a good thing to do with a car like this. She's already in the car. By the way, I just want to point something out here. I'm going to cut the video now because that's the end of the video. But I want to say, Mrs. Monica, come here. Yes, hello. Guess what Monica's done today? This is actually her day off work. She has specifically come in to do this video. Just for the car. Just, I oh know, just for the car. Well, it, was, it wasn't for me, obviously. It was for the car. I know it was for the car. She liked the car. I showed her a picture of the car yesterday because the owner sent us a picture. She liked it so much. She said, right, I'm coming in and I want to do this video. So bless, bless you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. You can go home and enjoy the rest of your day now. You. I've got to do another service. Anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome. See you. <laughs> That's it, guys. That's the end of the video. Till the next time, wait, there's more. This is my new friend, Neil. He's brought his Focus ST in here. He actually found us on YouTube. So I'm, woohoo! He's promoting Steve's taxi garage. Anyway, the sad news for Neil is, Neil, there's the bill. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for for bringing the car in. It's been a pleasure to work on it. And with that, that's the end. Cut. Till the next time, guys. See ya.